Mercedes world has been flipped upside down. The once dominant champions have had a rather steep fall from grace, going from annihilating the competition to wishing for a podium finish. Mercedes' form has even prompted an open letter to the fans, and there has been promise of radical and visible changes by Mercedes. And it looks like we may be seeing the first of these changes in Jeddah. I don't think anyone in the F1 world saw this, with many thinking last season would be a once-off for the Silver Arrows. But the new season has confirmed the nightmare may just continue for Mercedes. The failure to be competitive has created a civil war within Mercedes, with Lewis Hamilton lambasting his engineers and Toto Wolff having to bring his driver in check after his recent rant. These are scenes that F1 fans are not used to. Normally, Mercedes are cool, calm, and collected internally, but this season looks to have brought the worst out of some of the team. And we do kind of get it, as this is Mercedes, not any old team, and they're used to success. We are sure they will sort it out, but at the moment, they look a long way off after their recent open letter to the fans. Bahrain hurt. It hurt each one of us who head into every season determined to fight for world championships. It hurt the team as a whole after pouring so much hard work into a car that hasn't met our expectations. And we know it hurt you, our fans, too. Your passion and support are so important in driving us forward, and we know that we feel the same pain. We won't panic or make knee-jerk reactions. In a spotlight as fierce as F1, People are quick to point fingers or look for scapegoats, but you know us better than that. This open letter sounds great and makes everyone believe that they are looking to turn things around, as you would expect, but at the end of the day, results will count. According to reports, there is a major upheaval due at the team after news broke that James Ellison would be returning. This never materialized, but if rumors are true, then Mike Elliott has been given the final ultimatum to turn the car around. Whether you agree with Toto's or Lewis's comments about Mercedes engineers, it's a pretty big kick in the teeth to come out and say it publicly, with former team owner Eddie Jones slamming Toto Wolff for how he has behaved in the face of the media. He's the CEO, he's the boss, the buck stops with him. This is happening under his watch, Jones said on the Formula for Success podcast. To blame or criticize anybody in his design team is actually disingenuous. It's really crass. I hate to hear that because he must be a man, stand up and take it on the chin and say, my team, my people, we have failed to get the job successfully done at this moment. However, there are times ahead that we're looking forward to and we will be there much stronger than we were in 2022. I think that Toto is strong enough, big enough and man enough to front this up and actually sort it out. He does have a point as, according to most, F1 is a team sport with everyone contributing. Do you think Eddie is right? Let us know. Bahrain was dismal for Mercedes, but the Silver Arrows were both hurting and defiant about their performance. The team has come out to the media to say that there are radical changes on the way and delighted fans even further by saying the concept was in the wind tunnel already. Not bad going for Mercedes as they look to dig themselves out of this hole they find themselves in. Further adding to the optimism in the Silver Arrows paddock is that Jeddah should be a better track for Mercedes and that hopefully they can compete at Jeddah. We will believe it when we see it, but Toto did have this to say about it. The last time that I dreamt about miracles was a long time ago, commented a cautious wolf. That track at Sarkia is very rear limited. It has a very abrasive asphalt and that is probably the weakest point in our car. If you look at it from that perspective, maybe it gets better in Saudi. I certainly think when it comes down to front limited track, we will have much better pace. Russell has also backed up his boss on these comments, and his recent cameo on Mercedes social media makes us believe the team is in high spirits. Lewis has also come out to deny any rumors of him leaving for another team, with most news outlets reporting that he will be moving to Ferrari, but let's be honest, that's not going to happen as Lewis will most likely be a one-man team. Adding to the optimism will be Toto Wolff's latest comments about the development the Mercedes will be bringing for Jeddah, the team boss having this to say. Anything can happen in motor racing, so we'll be working in Jeddah to maximize every part of our performance, chasing every point, every position, and every millisecond, he said. That's one of the huge strengths of our driver lineup with Lewis and George. We are racers and giving everything we've got every time we go on track. This weekend in Saudi Arabia, we will learn more about the W14, its characteristics, and its limitations. It provides a very different test to Bahrain, and it will be interesting to see how the car reacts. We are bringing some small developments to the car. They won't be game changers, but they can start moving us in the right direction. 
and we'll be pushing as hard as we can to create opportunities and hopefully will give us a better account of ourselves than in Bahrain. Like all F1 fans, you always have to read Mercedes' statements with a pinch of salt, and even the smallest of changes can make a big difference. Let's not forget Mercedes is not looking to win Jeddah, but rather just compete for the podium, and minor tweaks may be able to do this. The key issue Mercedes is facing is they think they have a too high downforce rear wing, and due to this, they can't determine if their engine has actually fallen behind. But judging by Aston Martin, their engine is fine, and there is clearly another issue. This is where the most likely change will come. Asked by Motorsport.com about where he thinks the Mercedes engine stacked up, team boss Toto Wolf felt it was too early to make a firm judgment because of the wing solution that was being run. We need to analyze the drag levels first before we make a judgment of whether we're lacking power, said Wolf. Mercedes is pretty clear that they will need to change their rear wing that ran in Bahrain and that it's easier to shed drag more than anything else. Reflecting on the maximum downforce solution it ran at Sakia, Wolf said that Mercedes would come up with a different solution for Jeddah. It's easier to shed drag off a car because you simply take a chainsaw and cut the rear wing into bits, he said. So that's what we'll be doing for Jeddah. The team is well known for sandbagging and underplaying what they're capable of. We are sure this is exactly what they are doing now, but we will only know once the Sunday GP is concluded. Will we see Lewis and George on the podium or maybe even win it? Who knows, but stranger things have happened in F1. Even though Mercedes are downplaying these changes, these could potentially be game-changing for the team, especially if they sort out the rear wing issue they're having. It would be great to see a three- or four-way fighter Jeddah. However, we do doubt it as Mercedes and Ferrari look to be struggling. Right now, all F1's hope of a competitive championship relies on the evergreen Fernando Alonso as the Spaniard is finally in a competitive car. It also gets worse for Ferrari, with the prancing horse seeming to fall into the same trap they did last season, but this time a lot earlier than we would have expected. There are also rumors of toil in the team, but these have now been rubbished by Vassa. There is bad news for Ferrari, though, and in particular, Charles Leclerc, with the Monegasque taking a penalty in the second race of the season. After inspecting the parts in Maranello, team principal Frederick Vassa confirmed that Leclerc would need to take a third control electronics unit. Unfortunately, we'll have to take the penalty in Jeddah because we only have a pool of two control electronics units for the season, said Vassa when asked by RacingNews365.com. Vassa said the problem is something the team has never experienced in the past with those components. On Sunday, we had two different issues. The first one was in the morning when we did the fire up and the second one during the race, said Vassa. Unfortunately, it was two times the control unit ECU box, and it's something that we never experienced in the past. I hope now it's under control now that we have a deeper analysis on these. What do you think? Will we be in for another Red Bull-dominated GP, or can the other teams step it up?